Good morning, everybody. I'm so pumped to be here. This is exciting. I'm um, one of your first speakers of the morning, and I get to talk about something that I am very excited about. I'm not telling you about my business, I'm telling you about my passion. My name's Diane Buis. The accent that you hear, I always start with that, just because there will always be somebody in the audience who wonders. The accent you hear lives somewhere between German and French, and so you can now relax and just listen to. Uh, what I want to tell you, I am here to talk about ecosystem and why and how each of you should contribute, each of us should contribute. And so um, when we talk ecosystem, the first question is, what the heck is an ecosystem? So I just pulled off uh, the definition from Wikipedia. Really, what is an ecosystem? We talk about ecosystems in biology first. Um, so it's a, it's a complex system of things that support each other, of things that really make things work together. And when we talk about a startup ecosystem like we do here, um, we talk about companies, we talk about support systems, we talk about things that, make, that, that work synergistically for the benefit of all of us. And people often um, use Silicon Valley as an example of a startup ecosystem. Um, if you look at the pictures I picked, um, yes, Silicon Valley, yes, Boston, but yes, Ann Arbor and Detroit, and I'm here to convince you that you should all do what you can um, every day to kind of grow this ecosystem and help us all be better. And so, you know, let's talk about the ingredients, the components of an ecosystem. And you'll hear from the other speakers that are coming after me today, each of them represents um, some or several of these, of these bubbles. I could have put logos and numbers on there, but this talk would be three hours long and you didn't come for this. Um, but really, a startup ecosystem needs people with ideas. Often those come from universities. They can also come out of your own garage. Um, they need support and incubators, physical spaces where there's lab, where, where there's labs, wet labs, dry labs, where there's equipment, accelerators, where there's people who can help these startups achieve things are really important for that. Corporations are not just important for, to find clients, but also seasoned business mentors, folks who know what they're talking about, like the speaker before me and like some of the speakers after me. Um, and then, not to forget, we're, you know, Ann Arbor Spark is organizing this. It's our economic support organizations. It's governments. It's, it is the framework that makes this type of stuff work. It's service providers. We have a large cottage industry of consultants that help you get grants, that type of stuff. And last, certainly not least, funding. Uh, angel investors, VCs. Um, and so all of these things together, not apart, really make an ecosystem work. We have some of it. And um, many of you have probably seen the recent report from uh, the Michigan Venture Capital Association. Our ecosystem is doing well, um, and that is wonderful. But really, if you think about it, in comparison, I just pulled up the National Venture Capital Association's numbers. Michigan is not doing badly, um, but in comparison with California, and I pulled up our neighbor just because that will rile some of you up in comparison. Um, in, in comparison with some of the bigger ecosystems, we have a lot of places to go. There's no laurels to rest on for us. We can do better. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about. We here in the greater Ann Arbor Detroit ecosystem might find ourselves at an inflection point. And if you've met me in person and we've had this conversation one-on-one, -on -one, most likely I've told you the reason I am still in Ann Arbor, Michigan is because I really believe that this ecosystem is at a really interesting point in time. In software, I think we're already there. We have critical mass where if you left one of the software companies here in town today, um, you would find a job at another software company pretty quickly. Companies are poaching from each other at this moment in time. But we're not there if you're at a robotics company or if you're at a biotech company. And so what I hope for in the next five or 10 years is that if your biotech company is, uh, is, is, is going belly up, lots of startups fail, that's just how it goes, the science may not have panned out, that you can still find a job at another biotech company here because we have created critical mass. So we are at an inflection point and other are starting to notice. This is a great place. The pandemic, I would say, helped us solidify our place in the ecosystem as a great place to live, work, and start a company. But really, what can you do? How do we navigate this, this inflection point successfully? By reducing friction. And reducing friction means we, all of us, collectively help connect 
people and resources. We make sure this ecosystem grows and connects to each other for shared success. And so this here is what I want you to take home. It's a pretty simple slide, what everyone can or rather should do, and it is connect. Connect with each other, connect people to resources and information all the time. That is how we reduce the friction in this ecosystem and that is how we contribute to our shared success. And why should you care? Um, so some people do this out of the goodness of their heart. I'm one of those people I really like connecting people. It's part of my personality. That's why I'm standing here giving this talk to you today. But if cold-hearted dollars are your main motivation, and that's totally cool, most of us need to make a living, you ask yourself, what's in it for me? And what I say to that is we're growing the pie. We should all aim to grow the pie so that the piece each of us individually holds gets bigger. And what that means is by connecting our ecosystem, we can um, make a difference for everyone. Eventually, that means that if you have a small coffee shop here in town, you'll have more clients. If you own a home, the, its price will go up over time. And if you're a startup, you'll be able to raise more money. So with that, ask yourself in all of your interaction, at least once a day, what would be a resource, information, or introduction that could help this person? Just the person in front of you. Even if they're wildly successful, even if you think they don't need it, think, what can I do for this person? And then, you know, how do you know what you have in mind might even be useful for them? Well, three things, listen deeply. Try and understand this person. Who is this person? What are they telling you? What are they not telling you? Understand that person. Um, trust your gut. Actually own being wrong. You have nothing to lose. You're actually doing something nice for this person. Um, many of you I've introduced to each other at some point, and I've said, I'm not entirely sure, but you should talk to each other. I own that. And then broaden your horizons. Go places where there are people who are different from you. Learn about a different industry so that you can actually be more effective at making these connections that are outside of your realm of expertise. And then ask. Each of us has goals of our own. And so it is, it is an exchange. And in order to ask good questions, formulate a goal, a personal one, your career, your company, and a community level one. I told you my community level one. It is reducing the friction so that if somebody leaves a biotech company tomorrow, they can get a job at another biotech company easily without moving away to the coasts. Um, and then ask someone else's question. If someone asks you for something and you don't have an answer, no, I actually don't know anyone who does underwater basket weaving. But in my next conversation, I'll ask, hey, do you know someone who does underwater basket weaving? I'm trying to connect someone. And, and that way, we actually do reduce that friction. We do make the connections in the ecosystem. And so with that, I'll recap. In order to grow the pie for all of us, in order to actually reduce the friction in this ecosystem for all of us and for all of our companies to have better access to talent, resources, and advice, I want you to, in your interactions with everyone, not just with the important people, I want you to listen deeply to understand who you're talking to, what their pain points are, and what they're looking for. I want you to trust your gut. Not be afraid of being wrong. What, what do you have to lose? An introduction that's wasted? Well, don't we all waste a lot of time every day? So trust your gut, broaden your horizons, seek diversity of thought, seek people with expertise that is other than yours. Know your super connectors who have uh, tentacles into lots of different industries and lots of different places. Formulate a personal goal for yourself and a community goal. What is it that you want to see happen in your community? And also, ask somebody else's question. It makes you seem like a nicer person, and it really does make that difference for the ecosystem. And so with that, I hope that you'll consider doing all of these things all of the time, or at least some of these things some of the time. Um, to really grow the pie for all of us. This is my, my, my kittens and unicorns slide. This is just goodness for all of us. We're growing the pie for our ecosystem. It will benefit all of us. And with that, thank you very much. My name is Diane Buis, and I'm so thankful to be with you today.